Okay, we're back in Unreal. Um, did that do something weird? Okay, no it didn't. Um, so, you might notice the video looks a little bit different. I'm using this capture card that I got. Um, it, the video quality isn't fantastic, amazing, perfect. However, um, the frame rate seems to be a lot more stable. Uh, at least for the game capture doing it this way. When I tested it, it seemed like sometimes my camera kind of loses uh, frames, but eh, that's just my face. It's not the game. This matters a lot more. Um, so yeah, this is what I'll, I'll keep rolling with. So the first thing that I want to kind of tackle this week, well, I already did something which is change the collision on the houses. It was a little bit funky and people would kind of like get stuck in them. So I kind of just messed around with the collision generation settings and got some better colliders on it. You can't see. I don't know if there's any way to show just collision. There probably is. Uh, oh, collision. Yeah, now you can see. Excuse me. There's slightly better collision on the houses than there was before. And I just had soda in them. Perfect. Um, so first thing I want to work on, aside from that, is speed lines. So th this week I have just a bunch of things that are intended to improve the user experience, make the player feel um, the, the, the sensation of rolling around feel more fun. So the, the first and most impactful thing I think is going to be these speed lines. So this is the like, in my head I'm envisioning the like anime little white dashes kind of forming around the edges of the screen. I looked up, uh, just tried to see if anybody had done a video on it, anything like that, and didn't see anything immediately. So I do have an idea of how I'm going to do it. So I'll get started on that. And uh, depending on how that goes, I'll, I'll show it. Okay, so quick warning. This flashes a little bit. It, it, it's not super colorful or anything. It shouldn't be too bad, but it does flash a little. So I made just one line that I looked at a video online of <laughs> kind of how somebody else did this, um, or how, how somebody else, the, their visual representation. And it has this very quick um, it becomes opaque very quickly and then it kind of fades out a little bit longer and so you get this like whoosh, 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 whoosh effect. So I did that and now I have that here. What I think I'm gonna do is um, try to place these around the screen dynamically um, and I'm doing it on this widget that already exists because I think it'll probably make things a little bit easier but it might not. If it doesn't, I can just move this whole panel to a different panel. But yeah, I want to see if I can place these dynamically so I don't have to go through and place a bunch by hand and like figure out what the angle is for every single one of them. So I felt like this was worth sharing too. Um, if this thing is uh, anchored to the center of the screen, then I think that this will work uh, if I place them around the edges regardless of what kind of resolution you're at. Okay, so <clears throat> something I realized that like placing them dynamically both was going to be time consuming to set up and I wanted a little bit more control. But one thing that I did do was create a function uh, on these that automatically just rotates them to the center so it makes I don't have to go through and um, rotate them all by hand. I might do something like make it have a possibility for oops, a little bit of variance um, just to make it not look quite so like clean and uniform but you can kind of already see that it's got you know the thing is happening stuff's going on <laughs> um so yeah i'll keep placing these and get to a good point where i'm happy with the place but and i'll move on to the next step okay so i got a whole boatload of these things um I did a couple more things. Uh, randomized their rotation or their scale within a certain amount, so that they're all just a little bit, uh, a little bit more variation in there. And also, um, they all animate themselves. I don't have this blueprint doing anything really right now, except just being a container of them. Um, but they all start at slightly different uh, times. Okay, I had accidentally stopped and then went to re-record but I went back and looked at some of the footage and <laughs> frame rate at, at, at the point where I'm basically picking up now just went all over the place so I don't know what the deal is I'm not using the capture card anymore I'm just trying to capture 1080p video which means I have to edit in horrible 1080p but whatever we'll just go with it so 
at that point, what I had was the lines fading in and out. I don't want to go back and undo my progress, but basically what I was gonna, what I had done after that was made them toggle. Excuse me. So they only show when. Why can't I? See? Oh, that's why. I keep forgetting that. Yeah. I don't know how to describe that. I set up a toggle for the speed line, so they only show whenever you have the soda hat and whenever you're going above a certain speed. So let me show you what that looks like. Oh, I have to give myself the hat. That would help. Okay, there we go. Cute little lines. Great. Perfect. I gotta turn my volume down a little bit because it's distracting me. So yeah, I got that. And then something else that I wanted to do uh, that I implemented pretty easily was force feedback. So whenever you're grounded, um, using a looser definition of grounded than uh, the other thing that we set up the week previous where it was like the slope. Um, this is actually based on the rhythm height. So if you're, yeah, if you're grounded relatively close to the ground and moving at a high enough speed, you get some force feedback on the controller, which uh, a lot of like indie games will, or like game students, it's an easy thing to forget, um, <laughs> force feedback on a controller, but it's super, super uh, vital to having a good feel on a, on a gamepad. Cool little thing about that is, at first I thought that I was gonna have just this constant feedback that kind of changed in intensity depending on how fast you were going. It doesn't seem like I can easily do that, um, but not having that intensity change didn't make that big of a difference anyway. What did make a difference was not having to just play constantly, but actually kind of pulse, which is what this sine wave is. This is the, the intensity of the shock. Um, and it just loops this over and over again. Let me get this into a better view. So it loops this pulse and it only uses the small motors. It doesn't use the big ones. So it's very faint, um, but you get this sense of like, little paws uh, hitting the bottom of the ball um, yeah as, as you're going and it's it's kind of funny because like a lot of force feedback is so strong like it, it's meant to hit these like big moments where you know you do a cool I don't know kick or something and like there's a big impact that's usually what force feedback is and if your gamepad is like sitting on your table you get it's like boom and it like startles you. <laughs> it startles me at least. Um, but I like implementing force feedback in ways that are more just like feel like a constant tactile-ness to them. I don't know a better way to describe that. Anyway, the next thing that I had after that was implementing some little hamster cheers whenever you f finish deliveries. So the feedback for that right now is you get the little you get money added, you hear the money sound, a little dialog bo box pops up that says, oh, you know, thank you for delivering it really fast, or if you did a bad job, you know, why did you take such a long time? And some var variations on that. Um, so I'm gonna go through and probably just, I think the fastest way is just gonna be to record some little cheers for myself and then just pitch shift them up. And also maybe some like, uh, or like grunts or upset sounds basically for the times whenever you don't do very great. And that'll just help reinforce the feedback of finishing a delivery. Okay, so I got some little sounds in. As you can see, I've done a really poor job at getting this delivery in on time, so I'm gonna get a bronze. So if you listen, yeah, nice little uh, sound. Um, I'll go do a good delivery so they can hear that one too. Okay, this one is really nearby, so I have to go quickly. Cool. Yeah, they're a little bit quiet, but if you get either a gold or a silver, you get a little happy sound, and then if you get a bronze medal, you get a not-so-happy sound. So I'll go through and adjust the volumes for that, but uh, I think that'll help the feedback of doing those deliveries a lot. This might not come as much as a surprise, but I don't make a great hamster voice actor. Oh well. Um, it is <laughs> it is the best that I can do with what I can. I could maybe find some like free to use hamster sounds on the internet, but I don't really want to bother with that. Um, next thing I have is K 
camera zoom. So whenever you have the Hamville, um, which is the upgrade that makes you go down faster, basically just when you right click, it's going to play a thing that uh, changes the field of view of the camera to make it kind of like, whoa, look like you're sort of getting pulled out. Make it feel a little bit faster, basically. So I have this 20 minutes. That feels pretty quick to me, but eh, maybe I'll be able to do it. Okay, so I got the effect. So if I right click, woo, I see how the camera kind of zooms out there. And then whenever you let go, it kind of eases back in. Um, this is actually really, really easy to do. I don't think it took me 20 minutes, but it's got the same sort of toggle setup. I feel like I should make a macro or something for this kind of deal, but I don't know if you can because I needed to actually trigger events afterwards. Um, but a cool thing here is that whether you're start holding the button or you release it, it actually plays um, that sort of like field of view change at a different speed. So it eases out fast, but it eases back in a little bit slower. Um, it's hard to tell just like by playing, but trust me, it actually makes a pretty significant difference. So the last sort of effect that I want to have here is um, the pitch of the audio change whenever you're moving really quickly. So this is something that my professor mentioned uh, that I might want to do. Actually, I have no idea if the audio is coming through right now, but it's loud on my end. Um, yeah, this is something that my professor recommended is kind of like whenever you're moving really fast, kind of have everything pitch up uh, just to, you know, keep going with that feeling of, uh, of whatever. This won't be something that is changed by the upgrade. So like the speed lines you get from having the soda hat and the field of view change only happens when you have the anvil. Um, this will just be one of those things that's constantly on, but... I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. I think I can probably um, just apply an effect to like the master volume and pitch it depending on how quickly you're going, but I also don't want it to be so like annoying that it's happening constantly. I don't know, I'll have to see. Okay, so uh, I tried just affecting the sound effects and it wasn't... It was like noticeable, but it sounded just weird. Like it, it's basically just the wind sounds different and it, it, it feels weird. Um, so then I was like, well, what if I just put it on the master uh, volume and just everything is gonna get pitched up. Let's see what happens then. This is what happens. Oh, there's no music right now for some reason. Let's get music, come on. Okay, that's too good not to share, um, but that totally breaks like the whole rhythm game thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not, not dealing with that. So I can mess around more and see if like I can get the sound effects to like, I don't know, I just, I just don't think it's going to have that big of an impact, so I might end up dropping this. Um, yeah, it was a cool concept, like it was a cool idea, but I think just like sh shifting the volume of the wind up doesn't really do anything. Also, using this uh, mix class override, which I think is probably the only way to change the pitch of, uh, of an entire sound class like this, I don't know how to get the, vol the current volume of that class so it basically overrides whatever you have already set in the menu. I, I don't think that there's a way that I could really fix that. So that might be, <laughs> I tried, uh, it, was, it was a valiant effort, but it probably just doesn't make sense for the game. So yeah, we'll probably not do that. Okay, so I went back and I was looking at my tasks and the next thing I have is that windmill that I missed last week. Um, and you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I I don't know if this is really the highest priority thing. It's certainly not something that like got mentioned in, um, in my feedback. There's a bunch of other stuff that I needed to get taken care of, especially in order to um, pass the technical requirements to get this game uploaded to Digipen's game gallery, which just makes it 
I, I can't really upload it to the internet anywhere else as it's a student project, so it's really hard to distribute it, basically impossible uh, if I don't do that. So I have all these technical requirements I might meet, so I'm, I might uh, try to like talk to my professor about adjusting my work schedule this week to make a little bit more sense for the stuff that I need to do. But uh, I think I'm probably just going to call it a night and make up my mind in the morning. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Um, earlier today I went through DigiPen's game gallery requirements, which I don't know if I can like really show the PDF or if it's supposed to be sort of not something that we show publicly, but it's basically a seven-page long checklist of like, Here's everything that you need to do in order to get on DigiPen's Game Gallery, which, uh, you know what, that'd be a good thing to show. DigiPen Game Gallery. So yeah, this is basically just the website where you can see lots of DigiPen games. Obviously not all of them because there are these strict requirements that you have to meet in order to get them up. Um, and you know, Nitronic Rush, Igneous, Chrono Disfunglement, these are always the ones at the top because they got a lot of awards and look nice. So, all of these things that are highlighted yellow basically are things that I have to do in the next three weeks, which, you know, because it's a class that basically accounts to like three days worth of work, including um, what I'm planning on doing next, which is creating an installer for the game so that rather than just downloading a zip folder and unzipping it and running it, um, it'll actually install with, you know, a desktop shortcut, that kind of thing. So um, I don't think it's a super involved process, but I've never done it before, so I have to learn. Um, the software that pretty much everyone uses for this is Inno. It's free, it's been around forever, and it works. So <laughs> that's basically all it needs to do. So I'm going to learn how to do that and start making it. Okay. A bunch of stuff has happened. Uh, <laughs> I finished making the installer. Um, my game, I tried to change the name of it so that it wouldn't be called hamsterball.exe anymore and changed it to first hyper ham delivery company, which broke the ability for me to build it because it was more than 20 characters long, so I couldn't package the game and do an exe. That's fine, I'll just rename it to just hyper ham. Still, thing was broken, wouldn't really tell me why. It just said check the output log in the output log. So. <laughs> Uh, maybe one of the other 20 logs that didn't say which one. Um, so I ended up making a blank project, migrating over my level, carried all my stuff over, basically import or uh, exported the old project settings, imported those separately. I pretty much just moved my project to a different Unreal project file and then building worked. Um, and as the correct name, kind of it's shortened, but it works. The installer was super, super easy to make. Um, another uh, alum at my school had already set everything up and you just basically go through and change out the names of the files and stuff. I had to change, update these images later. This is just kind of the default DigiPen stuff. So I'll change out this cool dragon for a hamster. Same thing for the icon. Um, this, yeah, I've tested this installer and it works. So that's pretty much it for this week. Um, things kind of got derailed and I realized I should really start cracking down on the game gallery submission stuff now. Um, next week we'll be uh, doing gamepad support for the UI and like adaptive, uh, what's the word, like instructions. So whenever, you, if you start, if you pick up the controller and start using that, all of the prompts for like key put key presses, anything like that, will change to the controller and vice versa. If you switch back and forth between mouse and keyboard, the images will update to show you the actual correct uh, inputs. That Part of that is easy, part of it is a huge pain getting the UI, the menus to work with it is, is really, really painful and unreal for some reason. Uh, the system just seems kind of like half-baked, <laughs> not, not really great for, for gamepad uh, integration. But I did it on my previous project, like, or on my uh, team project, my current team project, a couple of weeks ago. So I pretty much know exactly what I need to do after a lot of finagling with it and, you know, kind of hacking it together. So know what I need to do with it. Um, and I'll also be working on just kind of knocking out more of the TCR requirements, which not glorious stuff, but honestly, you tend to get to that kind of thing around like 
the last few weeks of game development stuff, especially if you're trying to like put something together to put on a website or a distributable service, like you have to do all these kind of extra steps in between that eh, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but it's part of the process. So I think it's worth documenting. So hope you tune in for that. Thank you uh, for sticking around and watching this one and uh, see you next week.